product planning in uncertain times, and we certainly um, are in uncertain times now. So welcome, Shailesh. Do you want to check that you can share your screen now? Okay. Hello, everyone. John, would you confirm you can see my slides? Yes, I can. It's over to you. Oh, uh, so good day, everyone, and uh, um, you know, thank you for uh, spending time and uh, joining the API days. Um, my name is Shalesh Nalawadi, as, as John just mentioned, and I am the head of product at Sendbird. Um, I have been actually a product manager in various companies over the last 15 years, and uh, I thought it would be helpful uh, to have my talk today be about the topic of product planning in uncertain times. Uh, and so without further ado, uh, let me just you know jump right in. So uh, here's a you know a high level agenda for you know kind of how I approach this problem of uh, product planning in uncertain times, and uh, you know to, to kind of give you a quick summary, I think it is uh, always important to uh, have an idea of what your north stars are, survey the current landscape and challenges, and then figure out the opportunity where you, there is an alignment between your long term uh, strategy, your north star as well as some of the problems and challenges that present itself. So what I'd like to do is walk through an example with Sendbird in mind uh, and really describe you know, what is Sendbird's mission, uh, what are the challenges and opportunity, who are our customers, what are our challenges and opportunities, and how we went about you know, uh, adjusting our product roadmap in these times. So with, uh, let me just jump right in and talk a little bit, a little bit about Sendbird. So at Sendbird, we believe uh, that our mission is to help businesses build digital connections with their users through rich interactive chat, voice, and video functionality that is embedded in their application or in their website, uh, as well as a mobile-first uh, support system uh, that uh, allows uh, our customers to manage interactions uh, with their end users. Now, while connecting with users over chat, voice, and video, and providing on-demand support is becoming you know, more and more critical, we also realize that this functionality that we are offering is not easy to incorporate and build into mobile apps, even for well-resourced uh, companies. So our understanding is that, you know, and, and we believe what we do is we take away the need of having a, a dedicated uh, development team to build kind of conversational uh, features within your application by, del by delivering this functionality as a service on top of our platform and, and providing a set of APIs and SDKs for you to integrate. This means that you can embed all of these technologies really quickly into applications in a matter of days or weeks, you know, not necessarily months. And, uh, and, and that has been kind of our true North Star. That said, uh, it's interesting to think about you know, the current landscape and challenges. Every good product manager should always be looking around to spot, you know, in, in, in technology and in the broader society to understand what are the trends that are going to impact his or her business. Um, now, keep in mind that, you know, uh, at Sendbird, our customers are actually businesses that cater to end users. So our customers are B2C. Uh, and so, which means that it is important for us to not only understand what our customers are doing, but also to think about emerging trends that are coming through in the B2C, in, in the world of, you know, of our end consumers. So with that in mind, let's talk about what's going on. Now, as we assess the landscape, it is important to, to you know, uh, as for us as, as PMs and Sendbo to note the long-term trends that have not changed actually over the last few years. Uh, for example, more and more interactions and transactions are happening online. And this sh shift has only continued to happen over the last year, few years. While e-commerce and online communities, um, online gaming and app-based ride sharing were already you know, pretty widespread, new industries like healthcare, education, and entertainment have also embraced virtual interactions on an app or on a website as an important way to communicate with their end users. Now, it's, it's basically safe to say that every modern business needs a digital interaction strategy to connect with their end users or to connect with their, their users together. And in the last five years, the trend has been not just chat, but it's also voice calling and also video calling. 
basically end con our consumers want real-time access to each other or to the company that they're interacting with. But what has changed? And in fact, the, the, the biggest, most important thing to happen to all of us, you know, especially in the last 12 months has been COVID-19 and, and kind of the impact that it has had on our daily routines and our ability to socialize. You know, I live in the United States and for the last 12 months, all of us have had to restrict our movements and our social activities. And we've observed that as people are asked to shelter in place, they start to miss out on kind of social activities. And it's not just, you know, hanging out with our close friends, but also the casual interactions that you have, such as chatting with storekeepers while buying groceries, or chatting with the bus driver on your way to work, or chatting with the admin staff in your office, you know, during the daytime. Now, while we can always call our closest friends, these casual social connections that I described are completely cut off. And so increasingly what we found is um, if end users are turning to their brands and their communities to, to, to fill in the gaps for some of these casual connections. And there's been a huge demand for uh, online communities and it's been a surge in, in, uh, in uh, the, the population of people that are going online and interacting online. So what is, you know, these two things really represent for us as Sendbird and as, as product managers in Sendbird. One is a set of things that is part of the long-term trend. And another is this very short-term kind of thing that has happened in the last 12 months. So as a, the, the Sendbird product team con confronted the current landscape and took stock of its impact on the community of users that we serve and our customers, you know, we kind of asked ourselves, like, how do we think about you know, all of these changes? And, and we came up with four themes you know, on how Sendbird can help our customers. First is to uh, promote thoughtful connections during these unsettling times, right? The very best of humanity comes to the fore in these precious moments when somebody offers up, you know, some insight and experience that they have. Uh, and, and this offer is kind of rewarded by other members of a community who kind of come back and say, yes, this is great and, you know, and have a lot of empathy. This is kind of digital community at its very best. And, you know, we in Sandbird felt like we have to help our customers create this sense of community. Uh, the second theme is increasing engagement by bringing conversations into your app, right? When you bring conversations into your application and you increase the time that the customer sends in your application, this is within your branded experience, right? It's within your app. And, and we know that this is proven to increase customer loyalty, repeat business, and in turn, retention. So, uh, you know, how do we help our customers bring more of these engagements into their app? That became theme number two. Theme number three is increasing customer loyalty and the quality of conversations. Now, there's been a lot of discussions online uh, about how some forums have become a breeding ground for disinformation and hate speech. This would, if it's very important for brand for brands to and, and apps to guard against this, right? It would be kind of a disaster if your the forum on your app is associated with you know objectionable content. So another theme that we settled on is how do we help our customers? you know, foster good quality conversations. And the last one, uh, and this is kind of an evergreen thing, is how do we provide more insights and behavioral data to our customers so that they can improve the quality of the conversations so that our customers can make good decisions about how to invest in conversations and how to foster great user engagement and community, right? So four themes that came about as a result of understanding the trends that are going on. Now, it's worth pointing out that what has always been true is building conversational experiences within your app is hard, right? That has not changed. There is high expectations from our end users because they are benchmarking against the experience that they get in the leading messaging apps. Uh, there's an expectation of reliability and security, right? Uh, no matter whether you are on a 2G network in Indonesia or you're on a you know, fast 4G network in Japan, you want and expect things to work instantaneously. And I think the last thing that's worth pointing out is, you know, regardless of which platform your end users are on, they expect these things to work for them uh, seamlessly. So whether it's iOS, Android, um, you know, mobile, uh, mobile web, uh, desktop web, there's an expectation that it just works, right? And that has not changed. So 
keeping all of this in mind, here's an example of some of the features that we released in response to these trends and these themes, right? And I'm just gonna give you a quick smattering of what we've released just as an example, right? Uh, feature one, how, you know, creating scalable communities via supergroups. So this is just a particular feature that we released because supergroups enables admins to set up groups of up to 20,000 uh, users into a private channel. And this is significantly higher than the previous limit uh, that we used to have of like a couple of hundred per channel. And, uh, and our, you know, our customers wanted this and they want their users to engage with one another in real time chat, you know, like they do with their friends and their families in a modern message application, but they want to do it at the scale of thousands of users. And because there was so much demand and, and expectation from users, this felt like a very natural thing and a very welcome thing from our customers. The second thing that we focused a lot on, no surprise, is moderation, right? Because the quality of the conversations really mattered. We wanted to give our customers the ability to make sure that the conversations that are happening in their application were consistent with their brand. And so we created tools to help with moderation, both in terms of automated tools, as well as manual tools for human moderators to go in and manage uh, you know, the messages that, that they wanted to block. And the third thing that we released you know, in the last 12 months is this thing called UI Kit. And, and Sandbird UI Kit is basically a set of rich pre-built UI components that you can use to quickly create a modern uh, conversational experience in your app in just under 10 minutes. Yes, that's right, it's just under 10 minutes. And from the overall theme to individual styles, such as colors and fonts and UI components, everything can be customized into a full feature experience with minimum development experience. Why is this important? Because this uh, UI kit gave our customers the ability to quickly experiment with new features, you know, without having to worry about, uh, you know, like spending a lot of time in development. So, bringing it all together right in product strategy there is this tension between the tactical the here and now versus the strategic and the and the long term roadmap work every pm wonders you know whether they should be reacting to what's going on you know in the last 3 to 6 months you know in the in 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 the consumer world and whether they, they need to stop what they're doing to focus on this or whether they should stick to their long term and their original plans in fact, it, it seems like when, when things in the broader society seem very ambiguous, there is a desire to focus on the short term because it's easier to do. Uh, I actually think that this is incorrect, that especially when things are uncertain, it is helpful as a company to, to reaffirm kind of what is the North Star for your product and for your brand. And once you have established this North Star for your product and your brand, you should keep that North Star in mind and, and the long-term goal in mind as you make you know, these very tactical adjustments to your plans to, to incorporate you know, uh, new and recent developments. So in the case of Sandbird, as I just outlined, we went back to our core mission and we said, you know, we are here to build digital connections. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, you know, we're here to build connections in a digital world. And so we were able to look at the trends, look at our mission, and, and we went back to building a set of features that really helped our customers use conversations and basically chat to increase user engagement during these times. So uh, you know, that's pretty much the end of my presentation, but I'm not quite done yet. And I know that you know, webinar fatigue is real and, and, and I'm hoping that we can actually shake things up a little bit. Now at Sendbird, we believe that some of our best learning comes from great conversations. So we'd like to invite you and your colleagues, in fact, to join our Code Cafe series. Uh, which is a series of deep dives and walkthroughs built for developers where we, we discuss some of these long-term trends and also kind of show you kind of technical mm -hmm. tips on how to get through that. Uh, the content is obviously geared towards developers who are interested in building in-app chat, voice, and video. But however, you know, anyone is welcome to join and uh, please scan the QR code that you see there uh, to find out more. So with that, uh, I'm actually done with my presentation and you know, I'll turn it over to John for yeah. the Q and A piece. Yeah. So, Shailesh, uh, thanks very much for that um, for that o overview of how how Zen Zenbird has has approached your your product planning. I guess what I'd like to do is I'd like to pick up on um, the API product management product planning process because a lot of um, a lot of companies um, 
I mean, Zenbird is an example of, of where you monetize the API directly. That's right. Pretty much. Uh, there are a lot Correct. of uh, companies um, who may want to do that to monetize uh, an API directly, but then there are other companies, uh, many of them established firms, who who realize that they want to publish APIs for their distribution partners for other purposes. Um, and the, their core business isn't actually um, publishing APIs. It's uh, mm. their core business is something else. So what I'd like to pick up on is uh, just a discussion about the API product management or product planning process, because I mean, you, you pointed to some of the things that you, you at, at Sinbird do. You, uh, you're thinking through what your customers actually need um, and what are their pain points. But I, I guess what I'd like to understand is well, how you find that out to begin with and mm -hmm. thinking, thinking through uh, a company that has some, some data that they might want to offer as a product or they have their, an existing service and they feel, well, okay, I can expand on, on my reach by exposing an API so that other people can, can piggyback off of that or build on, on top of that. So yeah. what, what is the sort of, um, how do you find out where, um, uh, what, what your customers need, uh, what their pain points are, and then sort yeah. of prioritize what you as a company can do because it obviously has to um, work to your core strengths. Um, and and where, when do you decide what you can't solve for, for customers, yeah. what they, they or someone else needs to, needs to address, and, and how you prioritize, how you draw up that um, prioritization uh, list um, mm. so that you can actually uh, build something that people are going to use? Sure. Th there were a lot of questions there. So let me see if I can unpack them, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, one at a time. I, I, think a, 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 I think the key point actually that I want to address, which you raised, and thank you for bringing it up, is as an API company, how do you think about your products? How do you think about your customers? And how, and, and how do you design, thoughtfully design APIs to address the needs of your customers? Um, especially if you are in the business of offering APIs, you're basically part of what's called the build versus buy discussion. If you're offering an API, it's because you're saying, I can help, you know, I can offer this to you so you can buy it, but where you, the customer can buy this service from me rather than building it yourself on your own and incurring your own engineering resources. And that's what an API company does. It says, don't build it yourself. Use my API to kind of, you know, get there faster. And that's actually a very important and key point, build versus buy. That's the thing that your customers are you're thinking about. And as an API company, your value proposition is, if you partner with me, Miss, Miss uh, Customer, you can build it, uh, you, you know, by buying it from us, you can get to your experience faster. And in the end, it's cheaper than you building it yourself. And which means, uh, for you to be able to confidently make that statement, you have to uh, you have to know what is the experience that your customer is trying to build, who are their customers, and and what and and you know how are they, how is your customer approaching their end user? So it's it's kind of a a three party game, if you will, uh, where you know you have to think not just about your customer but your customer's customer. Now, in the case of Sendbird. We are actually very fortunate to to have as our customers some really amazing mobile applications that already are operating at large scale. So we are actually privileged because these apps come to us and say, "These are our problems." Hey, you know, we started using your chat. We got to ten thousand users in a certain group, and we started to notice these problems. And we are noticing that our usage is really exploding. So can you help us? So again, we are kind of fortunate because they come to us and they tell us these things. Uh, but I think it never hurts to say, listen carefully to what your customers are saying and how they are describing their business. So two key points in, in, you know, one is of course, listen to what they're saying and think about it from your customer's shoes of a build versus buy decision. Yeah. So th that's an interesting point, um, that your, your customers come to you. I think you're a little modest there because I think in order for customers to feel that they, they can share some some problems they they wouldn't bother unless they felt that um, you would you would address that that problem for them. 
So I, I think there's probably a step before your customers coming to you and saying, hey, we've got these problems. There's, there's probably something that you've done to, to reach out to them to say, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're innovative and we're agile and we're receptive yeah. to your needs. And how do you how do you establish that so that um, so that the customers do actually share with you the sorts of things that you could do to improve your product? Yeah, so fair point. I think you know how do you create empathy? So I said your customers say like, okay, Sendbird is a company that understands our problems, uh, and and you know that that is uh, that creating that empathy. Uh, is pretty important. We do that by actually uh, publishing a lot of opinion pieces and and blogs and and articles and contents. We put it out there on our website. We we join forums such as this one. We share our experience in building products and some of the things that we've learned. And we create awareness among the community of our customers that that we feel their problems. That we are articulating the things that they are also thinking about. And, and that has been the way, you know, through our, our marketing message, through our uh, our blogs and our how tos and our code cafes, where we we don't just try to sell them on hey, here's an API to do this, but we describe with them the problems that we think that they are facing and how these APIs that we've created you know, could help them. And then we sit back and listen, like, do you agree? Like, how do you think about this? So it is really a dialogue. Unfortunately, there's no. Uh, secret sauce there. It is uh, sitting there and listening uh, to customers and, and and showing that you know you empathize with the problems that they have. Thanks, thanks. That's that's a great insight. I, I guess when uh, when people are thinking about yeah, I built these APIs internally. We're using them internally. Maybe we can externalize them. Um, mm -hmm. e even if they, e even if you want to share APIs. Uh, across your organization if if they've been built by one team just because they've been built inside a company doesn't mean that everyone inside the company knows what they do uh, knows that they exist um, knows uh, how how useful it would be how how it would simplify things um, mm. if they they used an, another service rather than rather than build their their own so I think th these are all useful points for people to think about when um, they, 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 call, they may not think of their core business as building APIs um, or exposing a product through through an API, but this is a, a as they approach as, as they realize, hey, I've got I've got an asset, I've got a service, I've got, I've got a product that that I can share. The mechanism for doing it, APIs are a great mechanism, but I, I have to think through. I have to find the people who are going to use it and. Who their users and, and customers are. So that's that's yeah. A, if I can add one thing, every great developer API company or developer API service starts with a set of developers building something to solve a problem for themselves, and then noticing that actually there are others of their peers that have the same problem, and they're like, "Huh, I've already done this work to solve this problem for myself. I wonder if I can package it and offer it." You know, to somebody else, so that they don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? That's the genesis of almost mm -hmm. every API, because developers are like that. We solve the problem once, and we think, "I wonder if this can be generalized." And you know, I, I mean, I don't have time to go into this, but that's been also that was also the founding story of Sendbird. We had built, you know, Chat as part of some other service that we were had originally conceived of, and then we realized when people started coming to us and saying, "That's really amazing that you built that. Can I use just that piece?" That was the spark that said, "Huh, perhaps we're on to something," and and so I suspect that that is the story for pretty much every uh, API company, you know, at the very beginning. Great, thanks, thanks very much for for sharing that uh, with us, uh, Shailesh. So thank you. Um, we and actually that's a great lead-in um, because you just described how companies. Um, uh, Companies evolve from solving their own problems first, and that's um, our very next speakers are an example of exactly exactly that. So um, thanks very much, Shailesh. Um, My pleasure.